Everyone wants to shoot faster and more accurately. We've only got so much time, so everyone's looking for shortcuts, and that's gonna be either through techniques or even upgrades to the Glock pistols. Now, low and left is still gonna be technique related, but a three pound or three and a half pound connector can certainly help. The connector is the easiest way to decrease the trigger pull weight on your Glock, and the new Black Yikes connector from the Glock store does that better than any that I've tried so far. Now one technique that's used to shoot accurately is the prep and press. And what that's gonna be is staging the trigger onto the wall, then waiting on the wall and then pulling smoothly straight to the rear on the trigger. And this is what's taught by most lower tier instructors. If you've taken a firearm safety class or an intro to handguns with a basic instructor, this is probably what they told you to do. That is changing as people are moving more towards the trigger slapping, but we'll get into that in a moment. Now with a prep and press, the character of the trigger that is typically favored is like the 1911 style trigger, which is gonna be like a firm, crisp wall that you then pull through and then have a clean break all the way through with a little bit of over travel. And that's real good, but there are a couple downsides to the technique. Uh, when you're under pressure, Nobody is prepping and pressing. You're pulling straight through the shots. And there's evidence of that when you watch guys who are very accurate on a square range when they're not under any sort of pressure, but in their first match, they can't hit the broad side of the barn because they're yanking the trigger as soon as they see what they need to see on the sights. Now this is not a very useful technique for practical shooting or possibly even defensive shooting. So a lot of people who think that they want that crisp wall to pull through, are kind of kidding themselves that they get honest about how they're addressing the trigger when they're trying to go fast or under pressure. Now that brings us to the second school of thought, which is trigger slapping. And to set up a trigger really good for trigger slapping, you need a somewhat light trigger in the three pound range. You need a very smooth, linear, predictable trigger that you can pull straight through and have it break. Now this technique is very useful on targets in close, even out to moderate medium distances for handgun out to say 15 yards. And there's one big advantage to this technique and that's you can actually reset the trigger as the slide is cycling and reduce dead time, whether it's self-defense or in a practical shooting context, you're reducing the amount of time that you're dwelling on the trigger. And as far as those who do pin and reset, like the 1990s called and they want their busted police technique back. So for making trigger slapping work, you need a couple things. The first is going to be a very strong thumbs forward grip, modern handgun grip. I've got another video on that. You can click the link and check it out. The second thing, and this is where the hardware starts to come in, is that th roughly three pound trigger with a very linear and smooth break. And that's where the Black Yikes connector comes in. This is a ridiculous name. It was actually at one point named the Black Ice Connector, but somebody got to that name first. And so as a result, they had to rename it. So they went with the Black Yikes. Now what the Black Yikes is, is an armor lube coated three pound connector. Now a three pound connector isn't gonna deliver necessarily a three pound trigger pull, but you can see in the B-roll that it did drop the trigger pull weight from five pounds, one ounce, to about three and three quarter pounds. If you change springs, you can get the trigger pull weight reliably down below about three pounds. But let's talk about that armor lube coating. That sounded like a bunch of marketing hype, but I actually jumped on the website for the company that makes the armor lube. Now it is a dry lubricating coating that provides graphitic like lubricity while providing corrosion resistance and is very hard. It is intended to prolong the life of small parts within firearms. But most importantly, it doesn't have to be oiled. Now, if you shoot a Glock with a steel connector with no coating, you know that you have to put a drop of oil on the connector tab or else it starts to get a little gummy and gritty as it attracts carbon. That doesn't happen with this armor lube coated black yikes. Now the armor lube coating is actually almost like the very slick, very slippery Gen 5 slide finish, which I've spoken about in my Gen 5 videos. Now, as you see in the B-roll, the connector is actually black and that's not carbon fouling, that's a clean connector. But what's most important about the black yikes is there is absolutely no wall to speak of. If you have an adjustable trigger where you can tune out some of the pre-travel, you can basically make the Glock trigger have a zero wall. It, it just rolls straight through in a very linear fashion. It's very light 
and you can go straight through. So if you've got something like a pyramid trigger or any of the other type triggers available, you can marry that with that, tune out some of the pre-travel, and then you have a very revolver-like, very smooth, double action-like trigger, which is fantastic for trigger slapping. A lot of other triggers, especially the three and a half pound ones, they have kind of a false light wall that's not quite as good as this. So I was actually very pleased with this. Now I've been a beta user of the Black Yikes connector back when it was called the Black Ice. I've got about a thousand rounds or so through this pistol since installing it and it's been absolutely fantastic. I actually shot the Double Tap 2019 Championship with it and I was able to win A class and carry optics. You can check out that video if you're curious. I would recommend this connector to anyone without reservation for the competition set or a range gun. I'm actually curious about it, curious enough to try it in a carry gun with a increased weight striker spring to see if I can get the trigger pull weight around four and a half to five pounds, which is what a stock one would be. Now I'm gonna pull out my crystal ball and predict that this is going to become one of the more popular connectors when somebody wants to do a Glock trigger job. I'm gonna guess this is the one that people begin to recommend. Now one downside about the connector, if you can even call it a downside, is that when you install it, the trigger feel is going to be improved, but after you fire a couple hundred rounds and the piece gets fire fit to the rest of the trigger group, it improves even further. I'm not exactly sure how much it dropped in trigger pull weight, but it did go down some. So now we're gonna take it down to the mat and I'm gonna show you how to install it and make sure that it's adjusted so you get the best feeling trigger pull. Now to install a connector, you only really need a punch. You can use an Allen key if you want this punch. I'll have a link to it in the description uh, where you can get one off of Amazon. They're pretty inexpensive. So first things first, when you're taking part a Glock pistol, always verify the chamber is unloaded. Pull the trigger, pull it to the rear, pull down on the tabs, take the slide off. Now you can just set the slide aside because we're not gonna be messing with it. Now is the time Mr. Punch is gonna come into work. First thing you're gonna do is punch out the trigger pin. Then you're gonna punch out the trigger housing pin at the back. And we're gonna set both those pins aside so we don't lose them. Pry out the locking block, and I'll do that again so you can see. Now you're just gonna to wanna to hook the punch underneath the locking block and pry it out. Set it aside. Then we're gonna lift out the slide release. You can correct me in the comments about what you think this part is called and I will not care and ignore you. So now we've got our trigger bar and trigger housing. Now to take it apart, I need to do it this way. You just kinda of twist it counterclockwise and lift up the rear of it and it comes right out. So there is your connector. This is the black ice that's already installed. I'm gonna take a rag and get some of this carbon fouling off. And there's plenty of carbon fouling on there. It has been shot, like I said, and I have not cleaned it at all. And it honestly feels great. So you're gonna flip over the trigger housing and you're gonna see a little circle right there that is perfectly sized for your punch to go in there and you're gonna punch it out. So there it is, that is the Black Yikes connector. You can see that it is black in color. It is not just a clever name. If you put it next to the slide, that's pretty slide colored. So it's kind of like an NDLC coating. Now, as far as actually seating it, you just press it in and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have pressed it all the way in down there. And you notice that there is a bit of an angle right there with the connector and that's desirable. You do wanna kind of press down on it and make sure that the bend is just so and that there is a little tiny gap that you can slip a sheet of paper between the connector and the trigger housing and that should be good on the adjustment. Sometimes these connectors, and it's not just this connector, it is all of the connectors, need a little bit of adjusting and that's kind of how you adjust it. You just sort of press on it and do very, very slight bends to take out some of the bend. But that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hook back in my trigger bar and it's gonna be the reverse of what we already did. I'm going to take the nose of the cruciform and hook it under the leaf spring inside the housing and then just kind of twist it in. Now it's critically important that the cruciform rides underneath that little leaf spring inside the trigger housing. If you don't do that, the trigger may not work and you could have big problems. So then we're just gonna fish the trigger shoe through the frame, set it down, press the housing into the frame, put our slide release on, and I'm looking forward to ignoring your comments where you correct me on what that's called. Seat our locking block, 
And then you just want to make sure that you can see nice daylight through the frame and all of the pieces that they're lined up. This should not take very much force to press through the frame. And if you're having to use too much force, try wiggling the pieces until you can just basically press it in with your fingers. So I'll just use the corner of my punch to make sure that it looks roughly centered in the frame and it does. Same thing, I'm gonna make sure I see daylight through my frame that everything is lined up. We're just gonna press it in. Again, this shouldn't take a great amount of force to get through the frame. I'll use my punch's rear to make sure that it is punched in all the way and centered in the frame. That's it, we're gonna put our slide back on the gun and there we have it. So there it is guys, the Black Yikes Connector. Appreciate you watching. If you want to save some money on holsters, I've got links in the description to Harry's holsters with the discount code for you. Uh, short round supply, you can get ammo. And gallant bullets, if you load your own, you can get 10% off your first order of projectiles. But I appreciate you guys. Please subscribe, like if you haven't already, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks guys.